All right, everybody, welcome. I'd like to give you a little bit of a solar update, uh, how we're doing here at the off-grid cabin uh, through the months of December, January, and February, the three darkest, gloomiest months of the year. Alright guys, so first off, if you are interested in seeing exactly how our system's set up, uh, check out our channel and our solar playlist. I go into greater details of the exact cost of everything. It is in my solar shed and on our solar arrays. So if you want that exact uh, information, check out a different video, but I'll give you a quick 10 second brief here on the system before we start talking about how we're doing. So this system runs our off-grid cabin. We have a 400 square foot off-grid cabin. Uh, I ran a, an AC line underneath the ground over to the solar shed. From our, and then from our solar arrays, we have two solar arrays now that run over here uh, through this line. Our PV lines are through this conduit. Come out here and go to our two separate charge controllers. Uh, this is a newer system for this winter. This is to help us get through the winter a little bit better. Give us a little more uh, power from the second solar array, the tracking system over there. Uh, this, is our this is our system we've had set up for three years. This works great. Eight 12 volt, 100 amp hour AGM batteries, 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, 150 volt EPver charge controller, Rover 40 amp, MPPT charge controller, small charger for the system in emergencies if this goes too low, but this is a very small trickle charge like system. It's not really meant for a big battery bank like this. So this system works really, really well for nine months out of the year. The three months we're gonna talk about today is uh, you know the hardest months of the year. I'm just going to give you the truth about what we have to kind of go through to uh, and you know and how we've made some improvements and how things have worked over the last couple of years but uh, and just kind of throw that information at you so here we go so this solar shed what the numbers work out to is about 4800 usable watt hours of capacity so 4800 watt hours so what that does is in the summertime we're actually golden because we don't use lights as often you know the days are longer you're outside more you're not running lights from 5 p.m until 10 a.m you know those are all the darker hours of the day where you need light inside the cabin and you're inside more in the winter so in turn on, on top of that you do more computer time stuff more cooking uh you know inside where we use like an air fryer and silly stuff like that that uses up more energy sometimes we drink two pots of coffee in the winter time instead of one you know so it's more uh strain on the battery capacity but the biggest issue is this uh not the cabin but this <laughs> uh this is what it looks like for three months out of the year we do get the sun popping out like it's supposed to pop out this afternoon for a few hours. Uh, but on a day like this, this is like actually thinner clouds. Like it's a little brighter. I think it's like working on brightening up. Uh, I'll show you what we get charge capacity from our solar array. 10 100 watt solar panels. So 1000 watts of solar panels set up in a series parallel, two strains of five five in series and then it comes down to two that comes over here to our epver charge controller and right now our battery status is at 25.2 volts which is good okay this is good because we're not using this right now i'm not using the solar shed at the moment because last night the batteries dropped down to 23.8 volts uh anything below 24 volts i don't like to use the system because it's hard on the batteries and uh, we switch over to power stations so 
right now we're using a strand of power stations in the loft but we do a lot of power station reviews here and uh, we have an abundance of them so currently we're using one blue eddy option and then we have like a dapson version uh, both have over 5,000 watt hours they have more capacity than our solar shed so what we do is we run on the solar shed for a couple days uh, you know, like we'll get about two days of use out of it and then it drops below safe value or safe uh, Voltages, so then I switch over to the power stations for a couple days uh, The one that we have in the loft is 7,000 watt hours We can use that for two to three days and then we do have a blue eddy too Which we haven't even got to the point where we use that and with that system we have 5,000 watt hours so in total, we have quite a few watt hours of uh, battery capacity. So what we do, what we've been doing is bouncing around. Um, I keep all the DC current over here at the solar shed and the solar array. Uh, uh, DC current doesn't travel as well. So what I do is convert it over to AC current here in the solar shed. And then I have a 10 gauge three wire buried in the ground and conduit going over to a 30 amp outlet in the cabin that I can plug the cabin into that which runs off the solar shed or i can run it to any of my power stations with a 30 amp plug what i did is instead of coming out of my ac breaker box in the cabin that's why you're just like a traditional house or apartment i ran that down through the floor and then i came out with a 30 amp plug i took an i literally took an rv extension cord cut off the uh, female end and wired that into the breaker box to a 30 amp male plug and then I can move that around. Now I could use transfer switches or transfer boxes with levers and stuff like that, but you know, maybe I'll do that at some point, but this the way this is right now, I can plug it into a power station, I can plug it into the solar shed, or I could run a generator outside if I have to, you know, run an extension out to that. I think my next upgrade is going to be putting a transfer switch out here in the solar shed so I can run a generator out here. And then the wires that go into the cabin can either run off of the solar shed or a generator. That way I could charge all my power stations in the cabin, no problem. Uh, with the generator if I run out of juice, because we've run out of juice, you know, once a week. So, so currently right now, uh, the inverter's off. I'm saving energy letting the little bit of power we're getting from these dreary days recharge the battery bank, okay? That's why we're at 24.9 volts now. We're getting a little less draw, and we're getting, see, like, it's a little cloudier now. We're only getting 26 volts and 1 amp, or 0.9 amps. So the sun's a little bit more covered now. Now it's jumping up to, 50, you know, 46 volts, back up to 92 volts. Uh, that's just with the clouds rolling through. So right now we're getting 80 watts, which is better than nothing. That's pushing a little trickle trickle charge into my batteries, which is why it says my battery's at 25 volts. Once that uh, voltage gets cut off from the solar array, it's gonna drop from 25 volts down to like 24. So this little bit of charge is good, but not, you know, it's giving me a false reading of my battery uh, status. As soon as there's no load or no feed, no power feeding from the solar array into it, it's going to drop down a volt or so. So the way we're set up, if I get a little bit of sun, or if I get a half a day of sun once every three or four days, I'm fine. It boosts up our system, you know, tops it off, uh, you know, four or five hours of nice sunshine tops off our battery bank every few days but when you get weeks and weeks and weeks of no sunshine uh, we run basically we run the large generator now uh, it's like a 3500 watt generator open frame inverter generator what that does is i'll run that for two or two to four hours and i'll run power into the cabin and i can charge all my power stations and that takes care of us for another four days so if I get sunshine or whatever, give my solar shed a break for a couple days while I run off the power stations, then the solar shed gets to recharge. And then if we get a really nice day, I could charge my solar 
uh, power stations, my portable power stations in there off of the solar shed and the extra sun that I'm getting into the solar shed. Uh, so it, it works really good. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm not just babbling. But uh, yeah, a little bit of sunshine once every three or four days. Nice half a day or a uh, nice half day of full sun charges me back up. Otherwise, once every four to six days, we're using the generator uh, to top everything back off, fill up all the, the, the power stations. The power stations are awesome now. Uh, they've come so far in the last couple years that now they charge up like instantly. You could pretty much dump 5,000 watts into a power station in a couple hours. So I don't have to run a generator for 10 hours to charge all my power stations. Uh, same thing with the ones we have up in the loft, the Dapsons. Those can charge at 1,500 watts apiece. So they, I could, I could pump 7,000 watt hours into those systems in a short, like three to four hour period. It's pretty insane. It's really cool, actually. Uh, I don't have to run a generator for five days. I can run it for four to five hours and then be good for four or five days. So. I hope people that have like off-grid cabins and they run on a generator can realize the uh, benefits to having a nice power station. Uh, you know, I know they're not cheap and I am fortunate enough to, you know, Jen and I worked really hard the last three, four years building this YouTube channel and getting to this point where we have people that send us these and we get sponsored and stuff like that. But if you could afford a power station or find a good deal on one, and, uh, you know, you don't need their solar panels most of the time. You can get less expensive solar panels, rigid ones that you can mount permanently uh, and power those and recharge those with those. Those work great if you can set up a permanent array. Uh, they're about half to a third, to, you know, to two thirds less than the portable ones. And it's more, way more convenient than dragging around portable power, portable uh, solar panels but anyway uh, if you have an off-grid cabin and you can afford a 5,000 watt hour system to take to your cabin you can run for two or three days off of that as long as you don't like go nuts like we have lights cameras that we have to recharge like camera uh, computers that are hooked up all the time uh, we run a coffee, seven, 800 watt coffee maker every morning. The refrigerator draws only like 60, 70 watts uh, when it's just boosting up once or twice an hour. So it doesn't run continuously. So like right now, the sun's coming. You can tell the clouds are thinning out. It's supposed to get cloudy about in about an hour or two. It's supposed to get sunny in a couple hours. So it shows 25.5 volts and we're getting 1.6 amp push through the array at 95 so there's 125 watts about 125 watts coming into my battery bank and that's just from the one array that's not from the second array now i cannot tell the second array is running to the e-peaver here and i could tell the voltage which we're at maximum voltage right now I think this pushes about 60 volts from those panels. I mean, not maximum for the charge controller, but maximum for what I have it charged up to, or what I have it hooked up to do. I have these six panels running in two strands of three, and then joined down to one wire that goes over. So all my panels are set up in series parallel just to kind of keep the voltages and, and amps in a media, you know, in a moderate amount for both so your wires can handle it uh, and your charge controllers can handle it so we're getting you know 56 57 volts from that array but there's no way for me to tell how many amps i'm getting i don't know what this 6.9 i thought this was the amount of amps that was coming through the solar array which maybe it is but it, it jumps around so much so this is pushing 57 volts and maybe 5.6 amps. So that's, you know, 250 watts. If that's the amperage coming from the solar array, which it, that's what this little indicator says. 
But anyway, so this has, let's see, 68%. My batteries are at 68%. But that's with a charge going into it. So once the sun goes down and that charge is gone, if this doesn't jump up, you know, and gather another 1,000 or 2,000 watt hours before it gets dark, then it's going to probably drop back down to like 60% which would be like 24.5 volts or something like that. So we'd lose about a volt once the sun goes away. But I need a good few hours, and I hope I get a couple this afternoon because it charges battery bank back up nice. So with the solar shed and the power stations, we're doing good. Having those uh, portable power stations set up with the 30 amp plugs on them so I can plug my cabin into those, and then charge those quickly has been a lot of help this winter. Because uh, before I would run the little generator over here by the solar shed. And that only sucks up like a gallon of gas a day. And it would just kind of trickle charge my solar shed. Which worked fine. But it wasn't as good for the batteries. Like the batteries were still feeding the cabin. As I was pumping only 250 volt 250 watts into the battery bank which is nothing so it's basically just keeping it from going completely dead so we're improving we're doing better getting a better charger this is just a cheap this is just a charger that a friend gave me uh that only pushes 250 watts into this large battery bank only 10 amps so that's not sufficient or not efficient at uh charging this large battery bank it'd be fine for one 24 volt battery but uh my all my 12 volt batteries that are hooked up in series to make 24 volts that's a pretty good sized battery bank to be charging with 10 amps it's just like a trickle charge like i said uh, i would take a long time and take days at that to fill it up because you would only get 2500 watt hours in a 10 hour day so again it would take 24 hours to fill this up and that's if you're not using it so all right guys so if you're new here you might be asking why did i do agm sealed lead acid batteries why wouldn't you just go with lithium iron phosphate well uh when i built this system i wasn't comfortable with putting batteries that could catch on fire or you know the technology wasn't as advanced as it is now uh in my cabin i want to burn my cabin down so I went with this system. Now I know a lot of you guys have been here a long time and some of you guys are really good at this. You're better at this solar thing than me and you understand things better. Uh, I don't. I think I'm putting a lot of stress on my AGM batteries with them being outside, but they don't freeze unless they're dead and it's really cold, like, like below 50, minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're always charged. They always have at least 50% charge in them. So it'd have to be like minus 20, minus 30 for them to freeze uh, at that charge state. And they're always char and they're always trickle charging. So that trickle charging is producing heat. Like there is heat being produced in these batteries just by charging them. So they can't freeze when they're being trickle charged. They can't. And just like think about your car. Like it's not good for the battery, but they won't freeze and it won't destroy them. Uh you know, I figure your car, your car battery sits outside all the time and they last like seven years. I think that these batteries are showing their age a little bit compared to when they were new. Um, like I said, when we first installed them, I feel like we used to get four days out of them before they need to be recharged. But a lot of that might have been uh, just we used less energy. <laughs> like now we're a little bit more careless with it. And... I don't have a shunt or a gauge that tells me exactly how many watts we're drawing. My inverter does tell me, you know, we're drawing 30 watts, 60 watts, 120 watts, 1,000 watts. And I think it's pretty accurate because when I hook up, like, my water pump outside in the summertime and it draws 1,000 watts, it jumps up to 1,000 watts. Uh, when I hook a saw up to it that says 1,500 watts, it goes up to 1,500 watts. So it's pretty accurate. So I never felt like I needed a shunt uh, to gauge how much power I was using. Again, maybe this inverter draws 5% of my power down just by running. But there's always enough juice, even like I said on these cloudy days, to pump. Like right now we're pumping 150 watts from the original array. And 
I know if we're getting 150 watts out of that one, we're getting at least that out of the secondary array because it's a 1200 watt system. So, well, sorry to sorry to ramble, guys, but I'm just giving you updates, talking, telling you how we're doing. Uh, we do use the power stations quite a bit for like, like I said, when Jen uh, uses her little air fryer in there to cook some little side dish for our meal. Uh, it's just easy and it's free energy when we you know can charge it with the sun and it's cheap energy when we're uh you know using the generator even i mean five bucks worth the gas to run the generator for four or five hours maybe seven or eight bucks but uh yeah so we're not struggling as much as we used to you know we got it kind of half figured out and we're getting you know to the end of these gloomy days it's gonna be spring here in a in a month and uh you know spring <laughs> but the sun starts coming out more this month in february so i'm pretty excited to see more sunshine but so guys did i actually update you on our system or did i just tell you how everything works again i do that so the system's doing okay system is working like i said we could still run off of this for a couple days when it gets at full charge and then we just use the power stations for a couple days. And then if I have to, I hook up the generator and I charge everything. You know, the solar shed gets turned off. So then it gets a little bit of juice in it. And then the solar panels can just pump a little bit of juice into it, even on a gloomy day. And then we run the cabin on the generator and the two power stations for a few hours until the power stations are filled up. So I think the power stations are cool, guys. I really like them, and I think a lot of people would benefit. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the wind out of you guys. And power stations are really cool, guys. I know they're not DIY, but they are. They do solve a lot of problems. They, If you're not knowledgeable in electricity, they're safe for you. They're all ready to go in 10 minutes. You can have it hooked up to your cabin. If you run a 30-amp plug or, like, a fit, you know, run the proper transfer switch to your cabin. You could charge them up in a couple hours and then with a generator or with the sun. If you have sun, you're not going to need a generator for like seven, eight months out of the year. You only need a generator in the middle of the winter. And a lot of you guys aren't even, you know, if it's a, if it's a weekend getaway, you don't even go to your places in the winter time as much. So, uh, this system's awesome. Our stationary permanent system is awesome. But for plug and play and fast recharge and not having to worry about, uh, you know, each component going bad, that's really the only thing I don't like about the power stations is that if something goes wrong with them, you're up a creek for a while. Whereas this, I feel like I could buy, you know, the batteries are probably going to always be fine until they're dead. But I can have extra backups. Like I have two charge controllers now. So if this one goes bad, this one will still work. Um, the only I don't have a second 24 volt inverter. I do have a couple inexpensive 12 volt ones. So if I got desperate, I could hook a 12 volt to half of this battery bank and plug my cabin into it that way. So I like backups to backups. That's really the only thing. That scared me originally and the technology just wasn't there like it is today about the power stations or the all-in-one systems so they are a little more expensive you pay for the convenience but uh you know with the life po4 batteries in them and stuff you get freaking 10 to 15 years of use out of them that's if you use them every day as long as the other components uh hold up you should be able to use them things for 15 20 years that's if everything holds up. So that's, like I said, if. We've had really good luck with them. We haven't had any issues with any of the brands. Uh, but we don't take, like, the real junky ones either. Like, we get a lot of a lot of companies that want to send us off-brand ones. We try to stick with the more reputable brands or the ones that we've seen that have been reviewed. So, sorry, I didn't want this to turn into a power station talk. But it is a very valid option for you guys if you're and then you could take it home with you or take it you know it's portable whereas this has to stay here so i love this system 
I'm glad I did it because I learned a lot. Uh, and it still works great after three years. And I think I'll get a couple more years out of it. And then by then we'll be... We'll have some power walls or something in the cabin. There's some fancy stuff in the cabin. And we'll alleviate this uh, lead acid stuff completely. But... I love I love solar guys. If you if you have hobbies and that you really enjoy and fall in love with, uh, I think solar is something that a lot of people would enjoy. I love fishing. I love maple serping, maple sapping. I really do enjoy solar. It's a great hobby, and I love learning and I love getting energy for free. At you know in the you know in theory after you pay for everything. Well, we appreciate you guys sticking with us. We appreciate all the support. Uh, please ask me any question. I think I do better than anybody on YouTube, to be honest, at replying to my comments. It is getting a little overwhelming because we have you know close to 50,000 of you guys now, and I get a ton of comments. Uh, I've, I've gotten hundreds of comments on every video for years, but now it's like almost 1,000 on every other video so it's it's pretty hard to keep up with but on videos like this that are about solar and about stuff about the cabin that can be helpful i do i try really really hard to reply to all of those so if you have questions or you know have something useful help other people out that watch this video put it in the comments below please and like the video and uh yeah thanks for hanging out with us We'll see you in the next one.